Hi, welcome back to Yuppie Vlogs and welcome to Aruba. I've arrived like a week ago and I immediately had to start like working on my job. Because, um, you know, I traveled on the weekend. And this is uh, the first week I have moved for myself because uh, in like, you know, three or four weeks. Because I had to go to Denmark before that. Um, and I have a video about what we were doing there. So, I'll show that. Yeah. So, what you can see here is um, we are calibrating the software to um, detect the movement of these like large structures like you'll see them pick them up with the crane um, and they move around and you put them in the yard so the issue is that they keep losing them and we help them find it so what we're doing here is you know we have all this data in the video uh, with, you know time uh, stamps and where we're standing and etc and then we can use that later on to make sure the algorithm is like doing what it's supposed to be doing um, so yeah, I had like a lot of traveling going on because you know after that I want to go to Aruba. <laughs> Just inform the people involved. But we passed this tech check, which is really important. Uh, we we did like a lot of uh, tweaking and making sure it would work. But yeah, we managed to pass this, which is really good. Um, so like you know we show that our product is actually working. <laughs> Been working on it for like half a year and yes we, we made sure it's working okay anyway what i really wanted to talk about this time is um the wealth in the netherlands because this i've seen this article like a, i think a month ago and it has like been in my mind for a while um so we can like talk about like how wealth is divided in netherlands i i think it's like better than you know anglo-saxon countries like uk and us but it's still pretty pretty fucking unequal if you look into it <laughs> Anyway, like the biggest part of uh, wealth in Netherland, as you can see here, is just um, your own own home. Um, so, I mean, like one thing that that was like surprising to me is that most households they they don't have any like money money. They they just have like a home and that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you got these other blue circles, like the 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 dark blue here, which is uh, significant shareholders. So you got, uh, you know, effects, which is like small shareholder. And then you got like these large blue one, which is like significant shareholder. And essentially that means you're, you're relevant in voting. You know, you can uh, do some influence on, on companies, large companies like Shell and whatever. And then you got, you got stuff, just money on the bank, um, other. So this is like trackable goods, like houses, but also like boats and stuff like that. So there's like a class of assets, uh, except. You know these lose money over time and then you got like a little bit of uh money in in your business and uh other other assets uh like i suppose gold or whatever um, and then you know the other side we have the debts that are available and most of the debts are essentially mortgages uh, and it's a calculation like okay if you got uh 2.7 trillion in assets and you got 866 billion in debts then how much is your society worth uh 1.8 billion so we're not or 1.8 trillion actually so uh good news we're not bankrupt as a country that's great <laughs> all right and this is another interesting graph they showed um so we can see the change of um wealth through time uh, and we can see now after the 2008 crisis and the following eurozone crisis that um the wealth was going down in the country by a lot uh, but this light blue line is the wealth including your own um, home and the dark blue line is wealth excluding your own home so this is like other stuff like you know business assets and stuff like that um, and we can see that yeah the most wealth that has been gained in the last couple of years so in 20 until 2020 apparently uh, has been through home ownership and uh, the dark blue line hasn't moved a lot actually it went down after 2008 but there you go so you know the <laughs> the amount of wealth accumulation isn't that good actually like the economy is not doing well if in that regard the economy is not doing great you know what, one interesting aspect is that we could have more millionaires in the netherlands but this is like you know most of this is apparently just from home ownership which is you know strange way to become a millionaire but they have it so yeah as people they buy like a home well when they were 20 years old they paid on a mortgage over their lifespan and what, what, probably they bought a home when they were 30 years old and then they paid down the mortgage over the lifespan and finally they paid it down and uh, since the home prices kept going up 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 uh, they eventually became millionaires like that just you know not doing crazy stuff and just keeping paying down the mortgage 
Uh, so yeah, this article is quite interesting. Like, I recommend you to look at it yourself if you're interested in Dutch economy. It's a bit unfortunate it's written in Dutch, but there you go. I, I can translate it for you and give you highlights. But yeah, I, I suppose you can show it in chat GPT and translate it like that. Um, all right, and this is also really, really interesting. So this is like a map of um, average wealth in the country. Um, and they have like a little article summarizing what's going on here. But... <laughs> If you look on the regions, you see like Amsterdam, this is here, uh, the average wealth is about 9,000 euros. And the areas around Amsterdam have actually like lo a lot higher uh, numbers. So what's happening here is that people that live in Amsterdam directly, like have a postal code in Amsterdam, are usually like renting. And people who own those houses, um, are people who, uh, so they, you know, they, they went, go there, they have get like a job and they, they rent for, you know, uh, a couple of years and then uh, once they're quite sure about their job and like you know career aspects or whatever they they move out of Amsterdam and they move around in the regions Amsterdam and commute to their work instead and they buy a house in the surrounding regions because the, uh, a buying a house in Amsterdam is like not doable it's, it's too expensive and the same thing is happening in other big cities like Utrecht and um, Tilburg you know Eindhoven like all of these these cities um, you, you, you can see this effect like uh, the bigger the city, the less wealth there is in, inside the city itself. And that's just, you know, uh, young people moving to the city, building up a little bit of a career. Uh, uh, you know, most people in the city are young. And then, you know, once they reach like 30, 35 years old, then they move out of the city and start a family outside of the city, uh, which is inefficient. But there you go. That's what people do. What the system is designed for right now. Okay, so that's this article. And then I found another article. Uh, and this is like, you know, because uh, I have these ideas about taxation i think I'll, i think way too much about taxation okay <laughs> but that's what i do that's what ends up happening um because i get hit by large tax bills uh, my idea was like okay what if instead of income tax you, you tax the wealth directly you know you say you, you tax wealth for 10 percent directly so what would happen is with uh eight percent of people they essentially have extremely little amount of money they have less than five thousand euros uh, minus 5,000 euros. So they're like more than 5,000 euros in debt. Uh, in fact, in total, they're like uh, 35, mil, uh, 35 billion in debt in total, these people. Uh, it's quite a shitty situation to be in. Um, oh God. And the average wealth of these, this group of people, this 8%, like the bottom of society is minus 55,000. So they're like deep, deep, deeply into debt. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what to say about this. It's like quite staggering to see. Uh, and then you got like this this other group of people. Uh, you know, these are all the uh, extremely poor people in the Netherlands. Uh, so that's like bottom 20%. Uh, they also don't have positive wealth. They got minus five to zero. Um, and yeah, so like, you know, the average uh, amount of money they got is like minus 2,000 euros. So, you know, this may be like student debts or whatever. Right, this could also be student debts, to be honest. I'm not sure how how you got like minus 60,000 euros, but there there's like apparently a large group of people who got that. Because it's quite difficult in the Netherlands to get, get access to debt. Uh, so, it, I mean, it almost must have been like, take, you, you have a job. Uh, you got like 40,000 in student loans and then you take on a, another personal loan to buy a car or something. And that, that's how you get there. But yeah, it's, qu it's quite difficult to get that, that far into debt in the Netherlands. Yeah, and there's many, many people apparently that did that. Okay. So anyway, for my, for my idea, oh, actually it's uh, only 5%. So like in total, this is like, uh, yeah, in total it's like 12%. This is the bottom 12% of society. The bottom 20% of society is including this group as well, you know. Uh, it's not that interesting at this point because these ranges are so small, but apparently it involves a lot of people um, until we get into this part. So this is like 100 to 200,000 euros, you know. We can, uh, if we, we put like a 10% wealth tax on, on all of this, um, so all of these people, I think, would be paying less taxes. Uh, so that's like 58%. And uh, my point is like, because I paid 30 like around 30k in taxes right last year um well I, I would have paid 30k in taxes or 35k in taxes if i didn't do the pension shenanigans um so i would say like it's quite likely there will be uh political support for this because uh on average these people would benefit greatly from that the, these people would just get money back out right right um that including these giving these people money back 
uh, we would end up uh, raising around two because you can uh, do it from a total of this so 2.5 2.5 trillion so if you take 10 percent of that um you end up with 250 billion which apparently is more than half the income of the government current government and you can just like completely replace income tax with that however um the top so as we've seen like one one big issue with us is because most money have their wealth in their house uh they would be hit pretty fucking they wouldn't have the money right like if you if you're like you know have 500 to 1 million euros 500,000 to 1 million euros in your house and you suddenly have to pay 100,000 euros you cannot afford that uh you have to sell your house and um people it would be really, really fucking pissed off. I said, <laughs> even though it would like so the the the, the people that 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 get bothered by this most, so this this group, uh, these two groups, uh, would be really loud, and it's like sixteen percent of the population, right? Um, but they are by far the richest people. Um, but it would solve a lot of problems, actually. Like it would solve a lot of uh, you know housing crisis issues because suddenly houses become a lot more affordable because you know the ultra rich have to sell. Um, and I, uh, like another issue with this is that you, if you do this every year, 10% wealth tax, uh, it's unlikely that you can consistently use your capital to gain a return that's above 10%. Um, so this idea is, <laughs> what would you say, like extreme leftist? <laughs> it's essentially, uh, you're, you're changing your capitalist society to be uh, <laughs> having to lot, do a lot less with capitalism because like all of a sudden it's more about income you know about labor um well it's an interesting idea at least it's interesting to think about to me at least because i'm in currently in this bracket so i would be paying between 200 and 500 but i'm already paying that right so that's that's like you know the issue i'm having right now <laughs> because i have high income low wealth uh, re relatively you know i'm uh, what what am i yeah, I'm like in, in one of the larger groups, actually. Um, so I'm like 65% of people or something. 65th percentile. Anyway, I, I, I just thought this was an interesting idea to put out there because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially paying 10% wealth tax. Uh, or, you know, you know, the insane amount of income tax, which I'm just jumping through a lot of hoops to get rid of. But yeah, it's, it's nice to think about alternative systems, even though there's like no way I can realize this. <laughs> But I've been watching this YouTuber, uh, Gary's Economics, and he's talking about it in uh, UK politics. Now, which is wondering how relevant is this for the Netherlands? But considering people actually have to sell their own home, they don't have like a lot of assets. Well, they, they got like, you know, the ultra ultra rich got their significant shareholder stakes they can probably sell. But uh, yeah, since most people have it in homes, I, I don't know how feasible this is. Uh, this is why I am not a politician, but an engineer. <laughs> Yeah, because I have a lot of crazy ideas, but <laughs> gaining like popular support for them is, is just not my forte. Anyway, um, I, if you liked the video, please like the video. Uh, thanks for watching, actually. I don't know who is watching these, but uh, I appreciate it. People are actually watching them. Um, and see you all next time.